All right. Now, we're going to prove that the phenomenon that we have just observed is not an accident. We're going to prove that for every positive integer n, the number of partitions of n into distinct parts is equal to the number of partitions of n into odd parts. Now, in combinatorics, when you say that two sets, two counting things, have the same size, the normal way to do that is to explain a, what amounts to a bijection between them. That here's one set, here's another set, and here's a, here's a mapping that's one-to-one -one and onto between the two sets, and that explains why they have the same size. But what we're going to do, I, I like to describe this as we're just going to wave a magic wand and at the end of the day, we're going to know that the two counts, the number of the partitions into distinct parts and the number of partitions into odd parts, is exactly the same. But we will not have a clue as to what that common number is. We'll just know that they're the same. Kind of a high-level approach, extracting from the coding information of the generating function, the information we need. OK, now, we're going to do this again by generating functions. So I'm going to start with a generating function. f of x is a generating function whose nth coefficient a n is the number of partitions of the integer n into distinct parts. Now, um, uh, what does it mean to partition the integer 0? Uh, just by convention, I'm going to call that 1. Um, it, it just makes the analysis of the functions easier. All right, so here is the generating function. Now, let's, you, you have to understand what this, what this means, what this statement means. If I multiply 1 plus x times 1 plus x squared times 1 plus x cubed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and I want to know the coefficient of x to the nth power. Let's take a specific one. x to the 17. How do you get an x to the 17 out of this product? All right. From 1 plus x, you take one term. You either take the 1 or you take the x. From the next term, you either take the 1 or the x squared. From the next term, you take the 1 or the x cubed. From each of those terms, you take either the 1 or the power of x. But you want to get an x to the 17. So the selection you make here and the selection you take here, the selection you take here, et cetera, et cetera, have to add up in the power to 17. So if you're only worrying about x to the 17, that infinite product there you can ignore all the terms after 1 plus x to the 17 because you never use them. It's all involving the little ones. OK, so at the end of the day, what is it you do? You either take the x to the 1, you either take a 1, or you don't. You either have a part size of size 1, or you don't. From the next term, you take the x squared, or you take the 1. You either have a part of size 2, or you don't. You have a part of size 3, or you don't. You have a part of size 4, or you don't. And you're going to add up to 17. So it is the number of ways to write 17 as the sum of integers, which are all distinct. You can't take two fours. You don't have 1 plus x to the fourth plus x to the eighth. See, if you had that x to the eighth, that would be allowing two fours. And if you had 1 plus x to the fourth plus x to the eighth plus x to the twelfth, the x to the twelfth would be allowing three fours. But the way it's written, for each part size, you either have it or you don't. So this is the generating function for the number of partitions of n into distinct parts.
Do you have a clue what the coefficient of x to the 300 is? I can say it in words. It's the number of partitions of 300 into distinct parts. But I don't have any idea how big it is. And what about the coefficient of x to the 3 million? Now it's much worse. I can say it in words, but neither you nor I is ever going to compute. Neither you nor I. 